Here's a segment from the latest edition of St. Charles Parish Today, a monthly local talk show. It's almost been a full 12 months since FEMA's initial open house in St. Charles Parish, during which staffers quoted flood insurance premiums as high as $28,000 to homeowners on the west bank of St. Charles Parish. Those figures were in response to a new set of maps being rolled out at the meeting, which mapped many homes into flood zones for the first time. Many positive things have happened since then, thanks in no small way to the dedication of St. Charles Parish residents. They've told their stories to legislators, they've helped local officials make the case in Washington that these high insurance premiums will not only threaten home ownership, but also the National Flood Insurance Program itself. Two organizations have come into their own in a major way, both seeking a sustainable solution to the problem of debt in the NFIP. The homeowner, New Jersey-based Stop FEMA Now is making waves on social media, while the Coalition for Sustainable Flood Insurance is bringing governments, businesses, and professional organizations together to fight for needed changes to the Bigger Waters Flood Insurance Reform Act. With me today is Parish President V.J. St. Pierre and Caitlin Burney, Director of External Affairs for Greater New Orleans, Inc., to talk about communications and the congressional forecast for Bigger Waters. Thank you both for being on the show today. Thanks, Thanks for having us. So the big news around this flood insurance issue is legislative delays for now. Can you give us an overview of where we are with the different pieces of legislation that have to do with those delays? Sure. So first, we have some great news out of D.C., um, something you don't hear of too much these days. But um, recently, was a one-year delay of grandfathered properties was signed into law. So this is going to be a delay on any premium increase for any property, whether it's a business, a primary residence, a second home. Um, all those folks are going to be covered through this one-year delay that was included in the omnibus appropriations bill. So that's going to prohibit FEMA from spending through September 30th of the, this year any money from implementing those rate increases. So that's going to put us well into 2015 before FEMA could even potentially begin to roll that out. So we have um, one legislative victory under our belt already, and we're in a pretty strong position to pass a four-year delay um, out of the Senate when the Senate returns on Monday, January 27th. So um, what that's going to do is going to delay for four years all post-firm properties, all grandfathered properties that were built to code after the flood maps. And it's also going to allow second, um, Section 205 primary residences to be able to sell those properties and still be able to keep their low affordable rate um, without having that rate go up at the point of sale. So it's a pretty big deal and it's also going to require FEMA to complete the affordability study that was required in the Bigger Waters Act. Um, we really feel like they put the, heart, the cart before the horse on this uh, piece of legislation and they need to take a step back, do the affordability study and see how this is really going to impact folks across the country. And so. We're going to be in a great position, I believe, to get that passed with a pretty strong vote in the Senate, and then we're going to be pivoting and turning our full attention to the House to encourage them to pass that legislation as well. Right, and we know that you know it's not a fix for the flood insurance problem, but it, a delay is something that needs to happen to, for that fix to get done. Absolutely. So we've taken a critical path forward here, and the delay is really what we need. We need a pause so we can take a holistic look and say, what are the things that we need to do to make sure that financial uh, sustainability of the program is also balanced with premium affordability. We've got to get that mix right, and I think that equation was left out when they passed Bigger Waters. And so this four-year delay is going to give us a chance to really address things in a way that um, makes sense for both the program and for policyholders. And it's going to be, we're going to look for a cure that doesn't kill the patient. Right. Gotcha. And, and it also takes us to the life cycle of the, the, the national flood insurance, which is which is reevaluated re every five years. So exactly. it, it would take us another that cycle. And then FEMA would have to come in and do affordability study, which they should have done up front before, Beforehand. They, before right. they even talked about any kind of rate increases. Right. Exactly. This delay will get us to the reauthorization of the program in 2017, right. which is really going to be our biggest opportunity to go in there and make those um, changes that we need to gotcha. make. Very yeah. good information yeah. on that. Yeah. So I, mean, I want to go to the communications aspect of this issue. And we know that a lot of what's happened on this issue so far has been because of residents and them speaking out and them making noise. And of course, St. Charles Parish residents have been really instrumental in, in doing that. And you, Caitlin, you've been instrumental in keeping the public up to date, the media up to date through your job with GNO Inc. Can you tell us a little bit more about what goes into that and how people can learn more from you specifically? Sure, and I appreciate those, um, those kind words. You know, we started our effort back in April of last year, right after, you know, FEMA did their town hall here in St. Charles Parish. We started to hear about these exorbitant rate increases, and it started popping up in several different parishes. It was brought to our attention that this was going to be a big issue. 
And so we immediately went to D.C. It was just a local issue at that point. We only had Louisiana folks with us um, back in early May. And essentially, folks said, this isn't a problem. We haven't heard about this from anyone else. And we said, um, you know, we're not going to be the first. Pe we might be the first, but we're not going to be the last right. people talking about this issue. Mm -hmm. So we came home um, with the mission to build a national coalition. And essentially, we've just been throwing everything against the wall and seeing what sticks. We've um, we really set out to educate folks about what's happening and to advocate for affordable flood insurance. And so we've reached out to our community partners that we know across the Gulf Coast and across the East Coast, and we've begun to build this national coalition that's grown um, pretty organically. But we do weekly conference calls every Friday morning at 930, and we also send out weekly updates um, that recap the latest of what's happening in D.C., talk a little bit about what's going on in the media nationally on this issue, and kind of give action items for what folks can be doing to engage, engage directly with their own congressmen and senators on this issue. And so if folks are interested in joining our efforts, it's free, and we'd love to have as many folks interested as possible. Um, we, they would be welcome to get on my email list and to also join our weekly calls every Friday morning. Um, and to do that, you can visit our website at genoinc.org or csfi.info. That's our coalition website, and it stands for Coalition for Sustainable Flood Insurance. And folks can just shoot me an email, and we'll be happy to add them to our list. Awesome. Well, the next question is for you as well, and it's about social media. Mm -hmm. And we know that that's been huge in this fight against this flood insurance rate increases. Tell me a little bit more about the, that, those factors and what people can do to use social media effectively if they use Facebook or Twitter or so, something like that. Absolutely. Social media has been um, a huge tool that we've utilized to identify other areas that are, especially around the country, that are facing these increases that we might not know about um, through Twitter, through Facebook. I know Stop FEMA Now is a pretty big presence here um, in St. Charles Parish. They've done a pretty tremendous job of educating folks and drawing them around you know, one cohesive message. Uh, and so that's been pretty critical. Um, we also have Twitter and Facebook that we use. Our coalition uses that and GNO Inc. uses it. So we would encourage folks to follow us at CSFI USA and at GNO Inc. Um, and that's another way we're just trying to communicate in short blips about what's going to happen here. And we've been able also to engage more directly with members of Congress on social media about the issue, and also particularly with organizations who may not uh, support our cause right now, to educate them that this is more than a philosophical issue and that it's really affecting homeowners and people who have done everything um, by the rules. So it's been a pretty incredible tool to make sure that we're getting our message out uh, cohesively and coherently and effectively. All right, and I'll take the opportunity too to plug the St. Charles Parish Facebook page where we, you know, uh, share a lot of links mm -hmm. from CSFI and any kind of media um, reports that we get, and that's at facebook.com slash St. Charles Gov. So, VJ, the last question is for you. Is there anything you'd like people to know about this flood insurance issue, especially with the recent groundbreaking of the Willow Ridge levy out in Luling? Yeah, uh, I think our residents should know, as uh, Caitlin mentioned earlier, that we did, uh, the Senate and the House did pass the delay of the uh, one year uh, uh, of the two, section 207, but that's really not going to affect St. Charles Parish because uh, we hadn't adopted our FEMA maps yet. So we have two years to uh, revamp our maps, and then FEMA's going to have one year to, to re, uh, appeal our maps. So we like a, we, we have a, the residents of St. Charles Parish really have like a three-year window where they can expect any kind of rate increases. Uh, in conjunction with that, as you mentioned, yesterday we had our groundbreaking for the first section of the Willow Ridge section of the levee. And what we are trying to do is, because uh, there is going to be an increase in rates, uh, hopefully not 28,000 like they're talking about, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to, although this is not a, a, a core approved levy, we are building to core approved specs and to mm -hmm. FEMA specs. So uh, with the understanding that one day when this entire levy is completed and we come back and we can certify that, certify that, uh, that levy to uh, the core and FEMA's uh, specification, we can get a, a reduction on our uh, insurance rate, and also might be able to get reimbursed a certain percentage of that uh, from, from FEMA. I mean, from the Corps of Engineers back into the uh, Paris Treasury. So it's a, it's a it's a really big uh, a, a big step for us. It's uh, it's going to be a marathon. It's not going to be a sprint because you know with no no uh, no uh, earmarks in Washington D.C., it's going to have to be built with local and state funds. And uh, yesterday we got some great news that uh, uh, CPRA director. Uh, um, I can't think of his name. Garrett? Uh, Gary Graves uh, told us that we, uh, in this year's budget, we got another eight and a half million dollars allocated to St. Charles Parish. So that's going to keep us going to that next section, that Ellington section. So if we start chipping at it a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, we'll finally get it done. Right. Yeah. 
All right. Well, thank you both for being on the show today. We, we always try to keep people updated on, on the flood insurance front, so this is very good information. And, and I also want to thank uh, Caitlin and, uh, and Michael with uh, GNO Inc. This, this girl's been a pit bull in the... When Michael pointed her the point man, I'm sorry, point woman, <laughs> and, uh, and boy, she's on top of all the issues, and then she keeps everybody, all the parish presence informed, and we, we do have a good little local uh, core group that uh, is working really hard, putting a lot of time into it, but uh, they are the driving force, and we uh, really appreciate it. Well, Kevin. thank you. We couldn't do it without support from people like you, so no, thank we you. appreciate everything. Thank, thank you. And, and before we, we go, I want to especially thank the residents as well, because they, right. they've <laughs> really done a whole lot, especially on social media, mm -hmm. in contacting their senators and congressmen to keep this issue alive. Absolutely. Yeah, there's one other thing that our, our residents can do. We have, uh, Caitlin might want to uh, ch uh, chime on this too, is that we have three senators that are really blocking us really hard. Uh, Senator Shelby from Alabama, uh, uh, Tuma from Pennsylvania, and Colbert from... I think he's from Oklahoma. Oklahoma. So if, if, we, if you have any family or relatives in those states, and uh, uh, shoot them an email and see if they can uh, talk to their senators to, to kind of give them an idea of what's going on on there would really be helpful. Yeah, and I, just to reiterate, you know, it, it, any contacts you have in any other state, just to continue to hammer this away, mm -hmm. um, you know, we have great support from our Louisiana delegation, but we have to make sure that we get this across the finish line and your contacts in other states are really going to mm -hmm. be critical to that. Exactly, because like we've been saying the whole time, it's definitely a nationwide issue, mm -hmm. not just right. Louisiana. Absolutely. Right. All right. Well, thank you both so much. Thank, thank you. you. Watch the entire episode at www.scptoday.com or on SCP-TV.